Hello, hello. So it's been a long week. But it is what it is. You know how that goes. Between idiots of America and everything else. So today I am going to talk to you a little bit about things to do when you're in a custody battle, when you're not, something you should do from the minute that you separate with the child's parent. So this does go for men or women. I do not. There are great men out there who have custody because of the woman, whatever. There's great women out there that have custody. But there's things that you have to learn in the custody route to protect yourself and I've heard women go oh I never thought he would do that to me women wake up when they leave you they become the most ignorant I don't know what it is but when you break up and you have a child in the in there by year three of your custody where you had open co-parenting custody something flips I don't know if it's because the new person in their life gets in their head and starts doing whatever but you have to start protecting yourself so I started from day one when I asked for my divorce filed my divorce and closed my divorce I started a book of when he picked him up, when he dropped off, when he called, any text messages, everything's recorded. I don't, I don't play. Every phone call, every meet, everything I do is recorded. And there's a reason for that because I had an ex and his new woman tried to say to a lawyer, their lawyer, that I harassed them and berated them and blah 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 because I asked for the person to quit telling my child things that he should the child should not know so always keep your text messages back up back up back up not only to your cloud back up to a computer and back up to hard files my calendar which I usually just keep a Dollar Tree calendar. Like this. You write everything you need to. When I also write in whenever appointments for the child. Um, because I got told at one point that I didn't have him or my, my child vaccinated properly. Or I wasn't taking my child to the doctors properly. I wasn't medicating him properly. So I kept, every time I went to the doctor, if there was something prescribed, I wrote it down. The dosage, everything that had to go. And they did this because I realized in my first custody with my daughter how stupid people can get. And, uh, and, and I'm not being facetious. It's really childish how people can get. So, you need to protect your back. Protect your front. Um, I hard When I do a hard copy print, I write on the back. Um, like if it's text messages, I write the order they go in on the back. So, one, two, three, four, and then the dates. Also, when you print, when you screenshot text messages, make sure that the top screenshot, the very first message, shows the dates. So, if you have to go back and print and screen print 10 freaking screen prints because the conversation had gone on and on and on, do it. Because I have seen parents come into court 
say, well, they said this, this, and this to me, and the other parent had fake text messages, and say, well, look, that hers don't show dates, so these don't prove anything. She could have put anybody's name at the top just to show it was me, but doesn't show dates and times. So always, always, always get your times and dates stamped in them. Um, when I hard copy, I hard copy at the end of each month. And then I put them, I staple them into each month's uh, calendar section. <clears throat> My videos, if any videos I have to take, anything like that, I move them to my laptop, but in my phone, in my cloud, and in my laptop, they're numbered. So it'll be number one of September of 2003, number two of September 2003. So each month they're broke down to this one, this one, this one, the date, the you know, the date, the time, and all that. Um, because when you move them over, they will have their, um, metadata with them so it will if they need to be authenticated it's real easy to do because the metadata will be there so always always keep hard copies keep digital copies because you might need that metadata to go no 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 theirs is a lie here's my metadata can they prove their metadata and nine times out of ten they can't because it's not real <clears throat> but other than that Keep, keep your head up. Keep your head up and make sure you are respectable. Make sure you don't have the mouth to pop back with because you don't need to. That's neither here nor there. And actually looks even worse on them than it will you if you just keep your mouth shut. Because it'll look like they're irrational. And believe me, judges do kind of look at that stuff. They want to know who's the rational parent to be taking care of this child. Um, if you have a co-parenting situation, co-parent means to work together for the child. And there's a lot of people who have co-parent papers, but don't have co-parent situations. I know I had a co-parenting situation for about, mm, about four years. And then things started turning. And they started turning the more that this person got into their other relationship and that other person started getting involved into things that are not theirs to be involved in. Um, I'm really big at the step parent is the step parent. You step aside and let the parents parent. If you can't do that, then don't be a step parent. That's just how it goes. And then... But a co-parenting situation is when you're willing to work together for the child. When you're willing to have the same discipline across the board. The same um, schooling. The same everything across the board. So the child has no um, has no difference Everything is the same, so they know that both parents are not going to play any games. They're not going to be able to pin each other, you know, parents against each other. <clears throat> it is a opening front that parents should have. Now, there's another thing when you're supposed to be co-parenting that happens too, and it's called counter-parenting. And this is where... The parent that doesn't have them full time pits against the parent that does. And that is not good for the child. That actually is the worst situation for a child. They need to know that the parent's front is the same. <clears throat> that the parent 
both parents have the same rules that you know that they work together to make a cohesive place for the child and that happens a lot while people are co-parenting because the one party doesn't want to adhere to the other party's rules or they don't want to work together to make universal rules um, but it does hinder the child you're teaching the child that I can go over here and do this and then go home and say ha 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 I got to do this even though you grounded me you're just not co-parenting anymore you're counter parenting you're you're parenting out of guilt you're parenting out of not being there every day and that's not helpful for the child believe me I was a child raised by a single parent and oddly I was raised by my father which in 1980 was very very rare for a child to be given to the non-mother so not only have I lived through a custody I was the child of the custody but I've had two children that had to have custody um, issues arose now my first child that I had through custody her father had nothing to do with her for almost a year and then Thanksgiving I show up to my dad's house to have Thanksgiving to a process server serving me papers for him to try to get full custody and I kind of laughed and I said yeah that ain't gonna happen This man has been a drunk pretty much the whole time I knew him. And wasn't going to give up his lifestyle to take care of a child. And I got to the point when I moved out of state and got the permission to get out of the state after proving harassment and being followed and all that funky stuff that um I just I just left it as every other Christmas like we we alternated Christmas Christmas or uh New Year's and then we alternated in the summer. He got two weeks in the summer. And then I would let his mom <clears throat> get a week. And then she would spend a week with my dad. And then I would go up and pick her up. And then it got to the point that she got old enough to see things going on. Like he was going through her bags. He was trying to read her diaries. And then one Christmas... He, they went to some Christmas party for her family, uh, his new wife's family, and he got so drunk and embarrassing that the wife left, and Miranda said that she almost called my father to come get her because she was scared to be in a car with him. So, when she came back home... My, when I went to go pick her up, um, my father said, um, you might want to investigate in an issue and figure out what's going on, because I guess my daughter had sat down with her papa, which her and her papa are really close, and informed him of everything that happened, <clears throat> and... I said okay and the next summer she went up and that was the last summer she went because she was finally at the age where she can tell the state she didn't want to go and her reasonings and the state pretty much said okay so she didn't have to go anymore after that well 
through friends and everything else, we found out how he was talking all sorts of smack, that it was all my fault, and blah, 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 and still, still to this day does not take any responsibilities for his actions and how he's made her feel and all that stuff, and he ended up marrying somebody that hated children, didn't want children, and... Miranda felt that every time she went up there. She she felt the whole cold shoulder, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> and my daughter is very intuitive. She, she's, she learns more from people's actions than people's words. And that is because I taught her to be that way. Because people will say one thing, but they will not do that one thing sometimes so to always pay attention to verbal and nonverbal communications and it's done well for her I mean she she has a great job she knows what she wants to do she has a house she has her own she's got two cars now And she's a good kid. She's a good, solid kid. And honestly, if her dad just literally fell on his sword and said, I am sorry for what I did and the position I put you in, I honestly believe with time she would start caring about her dad. But... Because no effort has been made to <clears throat> uh, fix the situation from the parent standpoint. Instead, it just wants to be, well, my ex did this, this, and this, and has made my child not love me and not want me, and I have nothing to do with it. I literally don't. The child's 20 four years old, going to be 25. I had no situation in it before, except for just listening to my child and not putting her back in the situation she didn't feel safe in. And <clears throat> she has no idea what the situation of our relationship was like. She doesn't need to know that. And that's where my ex tries to tell everybody and I <coughs> can 100% tell you she doesn't know the downfall of our relationship because it's none of her business and then I've got I was never married to him I mean we were together for a few years But I felt when he, when I moved back home to get away from him and the bullshit, is when he proposed because he felt he had to out of duty. And I said no out of my own will because he, um, He was one of those that you have to have your hair and makeup done just to walk down to the damn mailbox. I'm not like that. I'm a very tomboyish type girl. I was raised by a man. So, the whole girly girl thing was just not my, my nugget. And he couldn't understand that. And because he couldn't understand that and couldn't control me... I felt that was what the ring was for, was to push the control on me, and I said no. And I walked away from the relationship, because <clears throat> no man or no woman, it goes both ways, should have control over who you are. If you're a person that loves to get dressed up, loves to do that, then that's you. If you're a person like me who rather 
stay in their sweats and chill out at home. And that's just me. I'm a homebody. I'm not a partier. I did all the partying I needed to do from 20 to 25. I always made sure that my child was with somebody when I went out. Nine times out of ten, it was usually his weekends. There's very few times that my stepmother had her so I could go out on my weekend because it was somebody's birthday and it was a situation where it wasn't going to land on his visitation time. Um, and half the time he didn't even take some of the visitation unless he was told to. But it is what it is. The relationship moved. I ended up moving out of the state in 2001. 2000, yeah, 2001. I moved to Florida. Um, a friend of mine from high school. I went to two different high schools. Uh, I went to high school in Burke, Texas. Burke Burnett, Texas for the first half, well, the last half, yeah, the last half of 8th grade and the first half of ninth. And I got connected with a friend from there that we started dating and he helped me with the courts to get where I could leave the state because my ex had it to where I couldn't leave without permission. So, <clears throat> going when I went to court, I had my calendar, just like I'm trying to tell you guys to do. I had my calendar. I showed where he didn't show up for most of his visitations, especially the one that was on Wednesday because of whatever reasoning. Um... And then the weekends that he would take her and then pawn her off on somebody else so he could go out. And I know this because I ran into him while he was out and I was out and I said, where's the daughter? And he had left her with this person or that person and I just kind of shook my head and went, okay. And when I showed it all in court, the judge said, okay, um, this military person has orders that they're going to be in this state for the next two years, an unknown which state, so we're going to set visitation this way, and that's how visitation stayed until she was, I want to say she, she was the summer after she turned 13. was the last summer that he had her and then she turned 14 before the next visitation and that's where we went to the court and had visitation dropped now mind you this whole time I did not go after him for any uh, raises that he got I literally left child support alone at what it was and I did that for quite a few reasons Number one, he was already suffering, trying to keep up with a house payment for a four-bedroom house for two people. Which I still don't understand for somebody who didn't want children, why they needed such a big damn house. And then... Um, so I just left it alone, and it also opened the door of him saying, well, I don't get to see my child. Well, I wasn't going to open that door and put Miranda through it. So he left child support alone. Um, even though he was one payment short at the end of his child support cycle, I just left it be because Miranda didn't need to be put through it. I didn't need to be put through it. So we left it alone. And that's where some of these baby mama, baby daddy, whatever you want to call them, don't understand 
well, you're making more money, I should get more money. Well, if you want more money, then you're going to have to give up time with your child and stuff like that, where I just leave it alone because it stops the argument. But when the court steps in, because you just went to court and the court says, nope, your child support hasn't been checked on in this many years. We're checking on it on automatically. You have no control of that. And then for that parent to turn around and blame you because now they're in the rears sucks. And it's going to happen. But knowing your truth and what really happened is all you can do. Um, if you got somebody who tries to dodge the standards of child support, um, in some states it's every year, some states it's every two years, and they're that person that goes to a company that pays less on purpose when they know it's time for their child support crap to come up um, call it out because the judge will say okay since you did that you worked at this job all most of this year we're gonna go by your w-2 and your w-2 says you made this much well on or I only make this much doesn't matter you have been proven to be dodging child support and how much you owe to your child and there's proof of it and I'm going to do said whatever the judge says to do and that's when these parents come out oh you're just money hungry honey I had nothing to do with it I got called by my lawyer said uh, court says this can't finalize until we do the child support check because of how long it's been so the child support check was done and unfortunately because our court case took so long they went back all the way to the first day that he filed suit and it turned around back on me of course it I need to keep my hand out of you know my effing hand out of my effing ex's pocket and all this kind of crap and sometimes step parents you're there to help not hinder you're there to help the parent that you're with you're not there to make the parenting harder you're not there to make anybody's life harder. You're supposed to make it easier. You're supposed to co-parent with the parent. If you can't co-parent, then you need to step aside with your feelings and let the parent do their job. And I have seen this firsthand. Um, the co-parent was fine up until a certain point and that certain point was when somebody started inject interjecting themselves into it and when you're a step parent that's not your job your job is to step aside and let the parents handle it and be on the same page as the parents if the parents want no spanking you don't spank that child if the parents want only this amount of time on the TV, whatever the parent the parents have agreed upon for the child. But what happens is these people get involved and it turns a co-parenting situation into counter-parenting because they feel that they should have a right to say anything about that child's well-being and it's not your room to say nor is it your room to stick your nose in and it's not and to sit there and 
make a co-parenting situation that was doing great. The child had way extra time with the parent to a co-parenting situation where they had to lose time with the child because you couldn't keep your nose out of it, um, keep your hands off the child, you could, whatever the situation is, just step aside, let the parents do their job, help the parent that you're with, which is what my husband does. My husband stands by me. He understands the rules that I have for Jaden. And he doesn't overstep his bounds. Because I, as the parent, made sure that that situation was done. You, as the parent, have to say, hold on. You're coming into this relationship that I already have with my child. The child and I have a good working relationship. My ex and I have a good foundation working relationship. As far as I get to see my child pretty much any time I want. My child, every time my child has asked his mama, or, uh, can I go over to, to my dad's? She's never said no unless it's a major, major thing. To now you only get your child a handful of times and you don't get any extra because you decided to go against the grain because your new person has gotten your head and now you've done cost your extra time with the child to be cut to what the court papers say period and that's that's bad for the child. It really is. Because instead of the child having a choice of how much they want to spend with their, their both their parents. When courts have to get involved. Because one parent's situation has gotten to the point that they have to kind of counter parent now. Because... If they don't, then their house situation is not stable anymore. That's that's suffering for the kid. And I, I just don't understand it. I really don't. I don't understand how you as a step-parent feel... Like you accomplished something when you really didn't. You actually made this situation bad. You ruined that openness with the father or the mother. To have that extra parent in their life more. Because of your selfish reasons. I... I I've never had anybody I dated go tell me what I'm going to do with my child and the time I let my child spend with their parent. And cause me to lose time with my child because of what? Because you thought you could get custody when... You have no reason to have custody. My children are healthy. My children have more than they need. And another thing is people don't use DCS and the cops constantly just because you get mad. Number one, the cops are going to tell you this is a civilian matter. That is not their job to do anything unless somebody's being harmed. Or the other parent is breaking their custody chain. And they call that, um, I can't remember what it's called now, but if you're the primary custody holder and they don't 
bring the child to the designated area for your child custody changeover. It's interference with uh, court order and also uh, parental interference. And then the cops can actually get involved in that because that becomes criminal. But as far as, oh, he's doing this, he's doing that, the cops need to show up and do this and do that, nope. Now, if they're on your property, you can have the cops remove them. But, unless there's physical altercation going on, or he has taken off with the child when they're not supposed to, that's child interference. That's custody interference. So the cops can stand in on that issue. Now, the whole using DCS to come into the home time after time, it gets to the point that DCS don't even come in anymore. And I've seen this because it's been done to me. To the point that they pull up to the house, they look at you and go, again? And you look at them and go, yep. Because this person likes to use DCS like it's their back pocket. And they literally will write on their report. Same as before, closed case. And that's sad. It really is. It's, it's sad that you think that kind of parenting is a ha-ha moment. Aha, I got you moment. When really it just makes you look sad it makes you look pathetic and it, it will get to the point that they will start charging that parent for the DCS workers time having to come out there for a case that has nothing wrong it's called invalid casing and I have seen Parents get charged with the proper amount of what that caseworker made and how much time that took out of another case that actual children were actually being abused in. So unless you know for a fact that that child is being abused or neglected, don't call DCS. Don't be that person. Because seriously, after a while, DCS isn't going to show up and maybe later in the situation with the child that the other parent gets with somebody that is abusive and DCS ain't going to show up because they've done been called falsely so many times to that residence that they don't even show up half the time anymore they will literally call you on the phone and be like well you got another case and literally have you just take pictures of their bed and the food pantry and all that and send it to them because they're not going to waste the resource of driving all the way out for a case they know is bullshit. And I'm sorry, that's just not right. Don't do it. Don't act like it. Don't. Just be responsible for what you do. Don't do something. Don't throw rocks at a glass house and then hide your hands. It doesn't work. Everybody knows who does it. Everybody knows where it's coming from. I mean, I literally would stand outside when they were coming up my driveway and be like, hmm, well, let me guess, this person's the person that called? And they would shake their head and say, yep. I've already talked to the child at the school, blah, blah, blah. The school is saying that they've seen no issues. So, literally, here, just take pictures that he does have a bed. He has food in his home and be on with my day. And I've actually had workers come out and say, well, they said you had 20 cats in here. And I'm like, <laughs> I've never owned more than four cats in my life at a time. Because it's way too much to pay for all that kind of cat litter and food and mm-mm. No, no, no.
I'm not a cat rescue. And actually at the time that that was said to the worker and the worker came over to my house, I had no cats in the house. I had three outside cats that were already outside cats when we moved to the place. But I never had any inside and I definitely never had a dog. I haven't had a dog in years. And you just can't lie to these people because it makes you look desperate. It makes you look bad. And I don't know what else to say to it, but don't do it. Unless there really is proof that your child's being neglected, like constant sores on their butts when they're babies. I mean, come on. Everybody knows what neglect looks like. Just because a child went to school with a pair a hole in his jeans that he actually tore on the freaking bus isn't neglect. Just because he had a stained shirt isn't neglect. The reason he, my child used to have to wear a stained shirt is on the days that he had art because I got tired of his $40 shirts getting ruined. His good clothes getting ruined for art because they wouldn't put the apron around the child when it came to art time. So on art days, I knew which days they were. Had them marked on the calendar, which was twice a week. He went to school with the stained, the stained up shirt because, and I told the school, until you guys give them smocks of some type I'm not they wouldn't let me just send the shirt for him to change into but the only other option I had was to send him to school with it in it so that's what I did and the funny thing is is this school already well the school he's at now doesn't it's starting to learn it, but the school he was at, um, already knew the uh aha -huh BS already, so they would just kind of shake their head and be like, okay, every time there was a complaint lodged because they knew the child was taken care of, they knew the child was medicated properly. The child had ADHD. He would have been way worse if he wasn't. And all that fun. So. If you're going to make. Accusations. You need to make sure you truly. Have something to back it up. Because if the other parent can come up and say no. This is why that child had this on. This day. And this is the reason the judge is going to say, well, there's a reasoning for it. And according to this, he's not in them every day. He's only in them on the days of art. So the parent is just taking care of the clothes that he has instead of having every one of his shirts ruined. And... Boys will be boys. They will rip jeans. My son has ripped so many jeans. I could not count. And I hate to tell you guys. Girls are just as bad. At least my girls were. Because I let them be tomboys. And let them get out and get dirty. And all that fun stuff. They're going to rip their clothes. As long as it's not ripped. In their ass. Where their ass is showing. If it's in their knees. Which... Everyone should know that's the first thing that goes in jeans when you're a kid. It's not neglect. It's literally that the child rips jeans. So what? And if he did it that school day, I can't do anything about it till he gets home. And then those jeans became play jeans. And we had to buy another pair for school jeans because... 
that's the way I always done it. They always had separate school and play clothes when they were little. And when they got older and into like 8th grade and up, where they didn't play outside as much anymore, then they would have maybe one or two outfits for outside playtime. And the rest would be their dress, you know, their school clothes and nice clothes. <clears throat> because when the child ages, they don't want to be outside as much. And I was the parent that, in the summertime, I kind of threw them out the back door and told them to go play. I also had to hose my children down by the end of the time because they would get out there and turn on the hose and make a mudslide and go mudsliding, but my children have imaginations, which is one of the reasons I always said that they needed to go out and play, because imagination is needed, and you can tell that the imagination wasn't fostered in a lot of these kids. Um, all three of my kids are artistic and that's one reason imagination is needed because you need to think outside of the box to be an artist my son does really great great sonic impression type stuff and boats he can he can draw a hell of a boat let me tell you guys now my oldest daughter she was great at facial drawings like, she could literally look at Johnny Depp's face and draw it. And then my middle child, she's my painter. She likes to paint. She likes to make different creations with paint and canvases and all that kind of stuff. But don't ever kill your child's imagination. Foster it. It's a good thing for them to have it. Otherwise, we're not going to have people in Hollywood to make movies and screenplays because they have no imagination to come up with them. But it is what it is. And we need to do better as parents. We need to do better as co-parents. And step-parents need to... Either work with the co-parenting situation or step aside and stay out of the co-parenting situation. Because all you're doing is, is you're fostering hatred with the child. Been there. I've, I've dealt with it. I've been there myself. That's all you're doing is fostering hatred in the child for that parent because you're making it difficult for that parent to co-parent because you just now made them a counter-parent and that affects the child your actions affects the children and that's where I want to get the message out of how to protect your child and yourself in custody issues and some step parents maybe you guys can learn some ways of not being um, overbearing be the step parent be the helper you're supposed to get you're supposed to work between the parent the father and the mother as far as all the rules you're not supposed to make life more difficult. You're supposed to try to help it make it easier. So think about that when, if you become a step parent, think about that. Think about what would, if you were the parent, think about how you would want that step parent to act. And be that step parent. Be the step parent that helps the situation instead of hinders. And you guys might have more. recourse with the child you might have more respect from the child because the more you fight against the parent the other parent especially the parent that is the primary parent 
the child gets older and the child sees it and the child is going to resent you for the counter actions of what you've done and I hate seeing children get to that point but I've been there I was that child unfortunately one of my children has had that issue and it's sad because literally it's just it's not needed it's not helpful it's not respectable and y'all can say I'm on my high horse but things need to start getting out there for these single parents that are busting their ass working two jobs and three jobs when the other parent kind of shot, found them a sugar mama and has the money to be helping and then complains when they have to. So, just keep your eyes open. Keep your back protected. If you are with somebody that is in the step-parent position, it is your job as the parent to give the guidelines of what that parent, that step parent can and can't do. And if you're not man or woman enough to put them in that position, then you shouldn't be with anybody until that child is an adult. It is your job to give the guidelines. It is your job to say, hey, you're stepping over your bounds and you need to stop. Keep that in mind. Think about that. If y'all have any questions, you can message me and we will get it out there. If you guys have stories you want to give out, my email is in the bottom. Email me your story. I will not tell any names. I will change names. And read your story online so that other parents can learn from each other. This is how we learn. We learn from each other. And I'd rather learn from each other than you going to court and going, Oh my God, I'm going to lose my child. And freaking out when you could make the situation different. So I will see you guys in a, in a week. Um, probably come up with some more stories and some more things to help you get through custody battles, custody time, all that fun stuff. But always remember to love one another, hug one another, and always be kind to one another. Because you never know whose day you can change, okay?